2 Corinthians chapter number 11. That was almost spontaneous, so uh, no preparation, so please forgive me. I hope that, that uh, you got a blessing uh, from that. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I'd like to read the first four verses and ask you to stand, please, and reverence for the reading of the Word of God, 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And we'll begin with verse 1, go down through verse, well, let's read through verse 5. 2 Corinthians 11, 1. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. For I suppose I was not a whip behind the very chiefest apostles. We're going to pause there, even though that he continues on. Basically what he's saying is, you'll put up with everybody in the world but me. You'll, you'll, bear, you'll get everybody in the world to, to come and, and preach to you. You'll pay attention to everybody. He said, but I led you to the Lord. Um, you'll find that in uh, chapter 4, verse 15, I think, of the first epistle. But we'll use verse 4 for our text, and then we'll pray. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if he receive another spirit, which we have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well bear with him. And I want you to pay attention especially to right there in the middle, another spirit which you have not received. Right. Will you bow your heads with me, please, for prayer? Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you would work in our church tonight. By the Holy Ghost, we thank you for that one spirit, that one holy spirit. And I pray that as we try to expose the devices of the devil tonight, that you would have mercy upon me and upon this congregation. And Lord, even though it's not related to this message, my heart goes out to people at this time of the year. That when <laughs> December comes up, it's not all that thrilling to them because they have painful memories of people that uh, have passed away, or of other disappointments. And I pray that you'd have mercy upon each one. Bless your message tonight, for I ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Won't you be seated? Thinking of praying about December and of people's emotions in December, um, probably, probably nobody remembers Maybe you will when I say it, but the man that I mentioned to you that we had a funeral for on Friday, who was a member of our church, and I've, for five short years I've been here, I've, I've buried the bodies of a number of people that belong to Glenwood Baptist Church. Uh, this man was a dear man, but he and his wife joined our church on Christmas Day, December 25 of 2016. And I, I think that they wanted to do what the Lord wanted them to do, but I also think they wanted to do it as, uh, on purpose, yep. uh, to honor the Lord, honor this church, and honor me mm -hmm. uh, uh, on that day and join our church, and, and certainly they were a real addition to our church. Now Paul lamented the fact that these carnal Corinthians, and everybody knows that, right? You've read your Bible to where you know that if there's any church in the Bible that was written to that was carnal, it was that church. When we say carnal, we're talking about fleshly. We're talking about following the old nature, following the flesh. And he was uh, upset about the fact that they wouldn't receive and, get, and take correction from him about the errors that they had. And he said, you might well receive another spirit which ye have not 
received. They had received the Holy Spirit, but he acted like that they would be willing to receive another spirit. In other words, he's saying, you're more likely to receive an unclean spirit and listen to the directions of that unclean spirit than you will listen to my admonitions as an apostle. And I will title tonight's message after uh, those words, I don't call the message tonight an imitation spirit. An imitation spirit. I believe that most Christians know this, and you people who've been uh, here for uh, recent messages here at Glenwood on Sunday nights know that one of the great aspirations of Satan is to be like the Most High. He uttered those words in Isaiah chapter 14. At least that's where they're recorded. Uh, and right, right, he said that right before uh, he fell. And probably he uttered those words sometime way back in the past. Probably before the first man uh, was created. The devil had some kind of a throne because he said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Even today, while we won't uh, take the time and introduction to to talk about what that may all have involved, even today, the devil has a desire, he envies the things of God. He said to Jesus, all this will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Satan desires worship. Now there's a danger for the Christian in while we may make fun of, you know, the sign that says Sister Mary. It's got a big hand up there. Have you all seen those as you drive down through the country? And what it is, palm reading. Uh, we may make fun of some of those people and everything. There's a danger in ignoring the spirit world. That's right. Yeah. I'm not trying to make you spooky uh, tonight, but it just might be better... For the people in this room, if you got a little bit spookier than you are. Yeah. And what I mean by that, Christian people need to recognize the influences upon your brain, upon your emotions, and upon your activity by the spirit world. Paul said, I think it was the, to the Thessalonian believers, it escapes me right now, but he said, he said, I, here, he said, I, Paul, would have come to you once and again. And he said, but Satan hindered us. Paul had a goal and desire to go see some people. But the spirit world hindered him. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, and you need to recognize this as a reality in your life when you have trouble doing what you know God wants you to do. Come on, some of you, can I get a witness? Do you know what it's like to where you wanted to be in Sunday school? You wanted to give tithes and that other offering. You wanted to go soul winning. You wanted to reach a goal in Bible reading. Whatever. Do you know what it's like to want to do that and get hindered, get knocked off track? The Bible said, listen, some of that is the world and some of that is the flesh. But it's not all that. The Bible says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I don't know that I can tell it like he told it. This particular uh, rock star uh, from way back, uh, had his ups and downs in his life to where he'd get religious and, and uh, uh, less religious, uh, more like a heathen, and then more like a Christian. I don't know what he was. I've never heard his testimony. Anybody remember little Richard? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, in one of his times where he was cleaner and trying to be church-going and all that thing, I, I heard him in an interview, this was many years ago, and he was talking about that when he was in the world, one of the times he was in the world, he was talking about that when he would go and, and he would perform, 
He said at the same uh, area there were Christian groups performing. Yeah. Christian with quotation marks. Groups performing. And he said some of those groups stayed in the same motel that he stayed in. Yeah. And he said uh, that where they stayed, they had groupies come in yeah. and come into their motel rooms where they were staying and waiting for them after their gospel sang, yeah. <laughs> after their concert, after their performance. And he said, sometimes I would even go, because, you know, being an entertainer, he said, sometimes I would even go uh, to their sings and to their concerts and things, and I'd listen. And he said, oh, they would get with it out there. And they'd talk about the Spirit, and the Spirit is moving, and the Spirit is doing that. And he said, I would listen to them, and then go back to the motel room, and there they were with those whores. Yeah. Yeah. He called them groupies. Yeah. And he said, there they were. And he said, I scratched my head, and I looked at that, and he said, you know what I've concluded? He says, I'm not saying that they didn't feel the Spirit. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm not saying that the Spirit did not move. Yeah. But he said, beloved, all ghosts is ain't holy. He's just saying that they've got an imitation. Yeah. There might have been an imitation Spirit. Mm -hmm. By the way, the Spirit of God is the Spirit of holiness. I will talk to you tonight about an imitation spirit. The devil is in the counterfeiting business, and I want to point out some distinguishing characteristics of that other spirit that masquerades as the Holy Spirit so that you might understand that some of your relatives that don't even believe in salvation by grace are indeed filling a ministry of the Spirit mm -hmm. in their services. It's just a wrong spirit. Jesus said to his disciples one time, you don't know, know what spirit you are of. I'm afraid that Christian people, I know that some of you think you're immune because if you have the Holy Spirit, because you're saved, I know some of you may think you're immune. I say to you, be not deceived. I say to you, we wrestle not and against flesh and blood, but against principalities. You better understand that you wrestle against the spirit world of the other side. Now, what kind of a spirit is this imitation spirit? I want to say, first of all, it is a devilish spirit. It is a devilish spirit. Now, you may have the privilege of having Lucifer himself after you. Lucifer is a personality. Satan is real. And he is a personality. But whether or not you have the devil himself bothering you on any given day, I'm telling you there are devilish spirits out there in the world. In Luke chapter 4, verse 33, the Bible says, And in the synagogue there was a man which had, listen, a spirit of an unclean devil and cried out with a loud voice. They're called different things. This one's called the spirit of an unclean devil. The Bible calls them unclean spirits. Uh, the Bible calls them devils. Now, these devilish spirits are numerous. They're not just bad influences. Every now and then you'll hear somebody who may refer to like the spirit of um, fornication, the spirit of adultery, the spirit of alcohol and strong drink or whatever, or the devil of strong drink. But the truth is, is these spirits are real. Yes. These spirits are personalities. Yeah. I personally believe that every unsaved person has at least one of these operating inside him until he gets saved. Mm -hmm. I believe every unsaved, and I believe some unsaved people have a lot of them operating yeah, right. in them. Earlier, we quoted Ephesians 2, 1, and you have the quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins. Verse 2 says, Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, 
the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Some of you remember one man in particular that had more than one in unclean spirit. Some people refer to him as the madman of Gadara. The Bible never calls him the madman, even though that no doubt he was. And there's no doubt in my mind that there are people in mental institutions that their problem's not organic, it is satanic. That's right. That's right. There's no doubt in my mind that there are people whose troubles that they try to deal with, with, with tranquilizing and numbing, mind-numbing drugs and things, that all it is, is is they are troubled by sin, wickedness, principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, warring on them, warring on their mind. God's Holy Spirit has various names and is a person. These devilish spirits are named and they have personalities. Some of you know that the group of the spirits that were in the man of Mark chapter 5 uh, were called legion. They're called legion because they were many. The Bible talks about Jesus gave this uh, in Matthew chapter 12. He said that when an unclean spirit uh, goes out of a man, he walks about in dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Now, for characteristics of unclean spirits, I'm not going to get on to these things very long, but, but if you want to know if you're being dealt with by unclean spirits or you're having trouble with unclean spirits or maybe someone in your household is having trouble with unclean spirits, don't watch Jim Swagger. Right. He don't have a clue. He talked about unclean spirits and after church he went to the whorehouse. Right. Okay? Don't talk to Jim Baker. He did the same thing. Yeah. Go to your Bible. I but I brought a message that we put in a booklet form one time. You can see Mrs. O'Neill's got a a uh, uh, hold of it is called Marks of Devil Possession. I believe that's what it's called. I think it's called Marks of Devil Possession. And there, and there are uh, some <laughs> characteristics, somebody who's troubled by unclean uh, spirits. But Jesus said that when the man, uh, when the spirit goes out of a man, he walks through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. And then it says, then goeth he, excuse me, he comes back and he finds his house where he was. He said, I'm going to go back to where I was. He goes back to the person that he used to indwell. And he finds the house empty, swept, and garnished. In other words, nobody had moved in. I'm talking in the Sunday school class in the fellowship hall in Bible basics about separation, that it's negative and positive. Folks, if you are trying to live for God, quit something, it's good for you to put something good in its place. This unclean spirit left but the man had not put something in place. His, the vessel was swept, empty, and garnished. Nobody was in there. And the unclean spirit came back, and, uh, and he said, I like this. And he went, and he got seven other spirits. Now listen to this. More wicked than himself. There are degrees of sin. There are degrees of wickedness. You know some people who are more wicked than others. Well, I wish they'd recognize this sometimes on television, yeah. on the news, and, and when they talk about it. They think that the answer to everything is medical That's right. or education. education. They think that it's something with you know that you just need to learn how to deal with, or you've got a chemical imbalance. Mm -hmm. And so they want to deal with it by drugging you up or trying to get you to pay money to go lie on the couch and talk to somebody and, yeah. and get your mind uh, thinking right again. I wish somebody would say, I believe that person is full of devils. Yeah. That's right. I wish somebody would say, that person is one of the most wicked people I've ever run into. Yeah. That's right. I believe uh, during this time that, that we've been wrestling with this election, I believe there's some politicians that are exceedingly wicked. I just believe they're wicked. They not only don't understand things about uh, capitalism, patriotism, and the history of America, they are wicked. I believe there's people full of unclean spirits. So they are numerous, these devilish spirits. Second thing I'll say about this imitation spirit 
is at least in the eyes of God and anybody who really gets a good view of it. I want to say secondly about this imitation spirit. While it may not look like it on the outside, it is a disgusting spirit. The Bible describes Babylon in Revelation chapter 18 during the uh, close of the tribulation period that Babylon the Great is fallen. Right? This Revelation 18 too. Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Now, folks, I'm not against birds. I like birds. We've got a man in our congregation right now who uh, has carved me and painted me an eagle. He's done that for some of you. I like birds, okay? Mm -hmm. Of course, the kind that he carved is real easy to feed because they don't eat anything, amen? Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I like birds. But anybody who knows birds know that birds, like any other animal, are kind of dirty, and need to be taken care of and watched after. And if you don't, you may have a lot of filth and dirt. And then somebody uh, before church was talking to me, and I don't know, I don't remember what brought it up, but uh, he brought it up and he called it, what I don't call it, he called it a vulture. Amen. Now, I don't know if any of you that have been affectionately called this term by my wife, <laughs> but she, she sometimes will do this and kidding around with some of the men of our church, and she'll call you an old buzzard. Nice. <laughs> buzzard. Yeah. You know what? When you first see a buzzard, you might think he's beautiful. I'm talking about the first time you see a buzzard, you might think he's an eagle. Because buzzards can go high. I've seen buzzards that look pretty majestic, pretty graceful way up in the, in the, in the sky. Mm -hmm. And you say, boy, that's a good looking bird. But then you come and you find him having lunch <laughs> at the Roadkill Cafe. Yeah. That is an ugly buzzard. Oh, that is one ugly bird. Yeah. <laughs> and you sit, watch him sitting on top of a deer on the side of the road pulling that flesh and bloody meat out or on top of a dead dog or cat, you get to see the buzzard for what he really is. And people have been fooled by Satan, and no marvel, for his ministers are also transformed into a ministers of light, and, or Satan himself is transformed into a minister of light, therefore it's no great thing that his ministers be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Yeah. His spirit doesn't show up like the buzzard up close. Anybody say a buzzard up close? No. They don't show up like that. They look majestic up there. You watch them on television. Mm -hmm. On Sunday, you see a bunch of the devil's buzzards flying around yeah. on, uh, on Sunday on, on television. This imitation spirit is disgusting, though. Yeah. Disgusting in that he's ungodly. Yeah. Lost religious pretenders. Satan's imitation saints sometimes main domain, are able to maintain for a while some degree of outward morality. Somebody was talking about it, I think in Bible Institute yesterday, about the Mormons, said when you, when you look at them, you think that they are, quote, good people. Yeah. Because outwardly, they look like they're maintaining some sense of morality. Yeah. But I will let you know that even though you're looking at what looks like, and some of y'all have seen the TV commercials. Come on, some of y'all have shed a tear at one of the Mormon TV commercials yeah. or radio commercials yeah. where they talk about family, you know, and, and relationships being restored between the father and son. Oh, they know how to do that, don't they? You know what you're looking at? You're looking at a buzzard from way off. Yeah. Yeah. And he looks, he looks good. He looks graceful. Those Mormon ads look good. Those Seventh-day Adventist prophecy conference cards, they look good. Look almost like something that a Christian would put up. Well, I'm interested in Revelation. I'm interested in Daniel. I'm interested in the end time. Let's go. I want you to know, when you go and you show up, you are on the side of the road yeah. with a dozen buzzards mm -hmm. all enjoying roadkill. Mm -hmm. And they may be looking at you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> Twice a week. Twice a week, I, I play tennis with some men. I try to get a little bit of exercise. And it always disturbs us a little bit when you're playing and you're doing your best. And all of us are old. And you're doing your best to play. And you're out there, you know, thinking that you're, you know, one of the top ten players in the world. And then you see buzzards circling you. Yeah. While you're playing. And I'll say to the fellas, I say, y'all feeling all right? <laughs> Are you feeling okay? And somebody says, I think it's a commentary on your game. Yeah. <laughs> that it's either dead or dying or it smells that way. But when you see them up close, you see how disgusting that they are. These birds are up to no good. They sometimes attend the preaching of the Word of God at Glenwood Baptist Church. I believe that. I say it by faith. I've not, I've not been able to discern them out there, these unseen uh, spirits, except sometimes they inhabit people and create disturbances, yeah. you know, here and there. Yeah. Many times I understand that's not the flesh, that's the spirit world trying, yeah. to, trying to keep somebody from being able to hear the Word of God. Yeah. By the way, that's one of the reasons why we have nurseries. That's one of the reasons why that we have um, uh, junior church. That's one of the reasons why that we might call you down if you're distracting during a service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Because God intends for His Word to go forth without distraction. Right. And it's the devil who tries to steal the Word of God out of the hearts Amen. of the people that God's trying to get the Word of God to. Yeah. Behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And the fowls of the air mm -hmm. came and devoured it up. Mm -hmm. Mark chapter 4, verses 3 through 4. And the Bible says, later on in the interpretation of that, that where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Mm -hmm. The devils, these unclean spirits, are likened unto unclean birds. Revelation chapter 18. The habitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. These unclean spirits are disgusting. The imitation spirit is a disgusting spirit. It's ungodly and it's unclean. You heard me tell about the, the couple of preachers that were of renown, and there probably are untold examples of them that have not come out. Yeah. These guys travel, they go into tent meetings and revival meetings, get everybody worked up, it's all about emotions, and you can fool people if you can make them feel something. Yeah, right. Right. If you can make somebody feel something, you can fool them, boy, I mean, they, they, you can get them worked up into a frenzy and sell them anything under the sun. They do that and then they leave there and they go to do what they want to do naturally anyway. Yeah. They're unclean. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, Jesus said in Matthew 23, 27. For you're like unto whited sepulchers, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but within are full of dead men's bones yeah. and of all uncleanness. Yeah. Any of you have been in a in a place, uh, I <laughs> I got into the church van this afternoon. Been driving van the last couple of days. Got in the church van this afternoon, and and I thought, you know, it don't smell too good in here. I may have to, I may have to uh, take this thing and get it clean. I wonder, you know, and I was going to go pick up somebody, and I grabbed a little aftershave and sprinkled it on the floor, hoping that it wouldn't smell like a garbage dump. Then it occurred to me, I forgot I had gotten one of our men to put a bag of trash from the kitchen oh, no. <laughs> in the back of the van for me to take home and I was going to throw it away there at the parsonage when the trash people come around. So I still got that bag of trash in the back. You know, it's kind of like, kind of like the fellow that, that woke up one morning in college and, and, uh, and, he, and he thought there was a terrible smell in his room and it's because one of the other students had come and put Limburger cheese under his nose yeah. while he was asleep. And he got up and he said, this room stinks. <laughs> and he, he said, boy, this is awful. And he went out and the hallway stunk. He walked down the hallway and he said, this whole dorm stinks. <laughs> he had no idea where the stink was coming from. 
Uh, they are, uh, these, these spirits are disgusting. Dead men's bones and all uncleanness. My first pastorate, uh, we were having a revival and had an evangelist uh, with us. He was riding down the road and we passed a charismatic church, Babinette, Alabama. And that church claimed to be the fastest growing church in the entire county, Baldwin County, for anybody ever been over in that area. And uh, I mentioned it to my preacher friend who was preaching the meeting for us. And he, he, his question to me, has he committed adultery yet? And I said, uh, I said, well, he did, but that was some years ago. And he since has remarried and came back to this church. This church uh, called him back. And his comment was, to me was this. He said, well, just be patient. It will happen again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what he was talking about is, is he knew that these charismatics had an imitation spirit. Yeah. And the imitation spirit is a disgusting spirit. Right. It is an unclean spirit. By the way, that preacher eventually got to coming to the trailer park where Mrs. O'Neill and I live. And he counseled, counseled this uh, lady who lived alone with a little child in a trailer just across the way from ours. Uh -uh. She must have really had spiritual problems. Because oh, no. he came right regularly. Yeah. Every day. Uh -uh. And a little child come and played in the backyard while he was in there doing his counseling. Mm -hmm. You know what? He had an imitation spirit. Amen. No doubt at church on Sunday, he got them all wound up talking about, can you feel the spirit? The spirit is moving. Yep. Mm -hmm. Like little Richard said, all ghosts ain't, like ain't holy. Like a ain't holy. buzzard, I want you to know it's unhealthy for you. Yep. Over a period of time, an unclean spirit can destroy your physical health. Over a period of time, an unclean spirit can destroy your character, yep. your self-respect, your family. If you're a believer in the Lord, you need to become a discerner mm -hmm. of spirits. Mm -hmm. These birds are deadly. The third thing I want to say about the unclean spirit that's an imitation spirit, not only is it a devilish spirit and a disgusting spirit, but it is a dynamic spirit. And what I mean by that is... Don't underestimate in your own strength mm -hmm. the power of the spirit world against you. Amen. You better be strong in the Lord Amen. and in the power of His might. Don't underestimate <coughs> in your own strength the power of the spirit world against you. The Bible says in Revelation 16, 14, For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and to the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take off my jacket, mm -hmm. but we could imitate. I, I guarantee you, we could imitate it, and we could, we could have just as good a show as Benny does. Yeah. I could get a couple of our young men to come up here and catch one of you that would cooperate. Yeah. As we come up here, and maybe I'd spit on your forehead pop you one time and you go backward. Or we could take off the jacket and throw it over the congregation. And if you know that everybody in the world is watching us on, on CBN, you know, or, or some uh, Christian broadcasting network, you're going to cooperate. Because you're going to call mama after it's over and say, you need to watch this. I was on TV. We all got slain in the spirit as we all fell back. Folks, that's an imitation. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an Amen. imitation spirit. Amen. But, I, and what I'm saying by this and introducing this point is I personally believe that better than 90% of all of the stuff that's done in the miracle business among the charismatics, I would say better than 90% of it is just completely phony. Probably better than 99% of it. Completely phony. Yeah. You say, preacher, I enjoy watching Benny. <laughs> Ms. O'Neill's got one of my sermons in booklet form, if you want it, called uh, Why Benny Fools So Many. Yeah. I like Benny. Yeah. 
Well, you can like him, but you know what? If you think Benny's real, you probably also are willing to bet money on them wrestlers. That's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> because you really think that's athletics. You really think that's competition. You really think that they're out there to win. Yeah. Yeah. It's entertainment, folks. That's right. I'm not saying they're not athletes. I'm not saying that they don't learn their trade. I'm not saying they don't work out and practice and are skilled. But I'm saying they ain't out there to hurt one another. No. <laughs> they're not. Preacher, I've seen the blood. <laughs> you gullible soul. <laughs> I'm not saying you didn't see blood. I'm just saying you gullible soul. You. <laughs> Blood pays in, in wrestling. Yeah. Championship wrestling. I know a term some of y'all, you're not going to hear the rest of the message. You just wait. I'm going to talk about football later. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> a dynamic spirit. The imitation spirit is a dynamic spirit. There is power in the spirit world. I am not afraid of the devil and his minions. Mm -hmm. Because I trust the Lord. Amen. But I have enough sense to know that without the Lord's help, yeah. there's no way I can handle anybody in the spirit world. Right. Yeah. They can do things in the spirit world that, that can turn your head around. 180 degrees. Five or six times. Going in the same direction. Mark chapter 5, that man had supernatural strength. The Bible says no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because he had often been bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. He had supernatural strength. These dynamic spirits can give supernatural signs. And some of you, and I believe it's really, really in a minimum, I believe 90, probably 99% of what you see done is what you think of miracle or whatever in the charismatics is phony. Yeah. And all you got to do to know is it's phony is for one of them to really have a health condition. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, if they had, if they, they would have done cured COVID by now. <laughs> if they had the gift. Mm -hmm. They would be visiting the hospitals and, and, and they would be empty. There'd be nobody dying. You know nobody died around Jesus and stayed dead? Did you hear me? Yeah. Nobody died around Jesus and stayed dead. Uh -huh. And he gave his disciples the privilege and power to go around and cast out devils and to, and to heal the sick and so forth. Amen. But there are, there are people who do get inhabited by unclean spirits and may see supernatural signs. Right. Some of you are convinced that you know people yeah. who had supernatural revelations. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that as a third sub-point here. D this dynamic spirit can give supernatural strength, supernatural signs, and supernatural secrets. Mm -hmm. That is, some of you, you were told about a baby that you were going to have. Or you were told about how that your boyfriend overseas was going to be able to come home uh, within the next week and visit with you. And some of you would swear that you know somebody that we used to send our kids to to get warts removed. Yeah. Or whatever. And you say, Preacher, it was real. Well, every now and then, sure enough, it may be real, but it may not be the Holy Spirit. Right. Now, if you're a Christian, what are you going to attribute that to? Yeah. I attribute it to unclean spirits. Yeah. In the tribulation period, there are going to be unclean spirits doing miracles. The Bible calls them miracles. In, way back in the book of Deuteronomy, God told people in Deuteronomy chapter 13 that if somebody who doesn't know God, not right with God, not following God, says that there's going to be a sign or wonder and that thing come to pass, don't you pay attention to the sign or wonder. That's right. Because he's trying to get you away from God and God is testing you. The word is proved. The Lord's proving you to see if you're going to pay attention to his word. That's right. Amen. Or whether you're going to be so infatuated by what you felt and what you saw yeah. 
that you let that interpret the Bible. I am not going to let these charismatic shysters interpret my Bible. I'm going to interpret them by my Bible. Number four. You still hanging in there? I actually believe there's some people that really do have ESP. I do. I believe that some people have ESP. Yeah, but what you've got is contagious. What people have got... What some people, I think some people actually have ESP, and uh, what I'm talking about is they've got a spirit that visits them that also can visit somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. These spirits can move around That's right. That's true. from one to another. Do you know there's a place in the Bible that tells you be careful about what you say in your chamber? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It said be careful yeah. because it says... And some of you know there's a saying that comes from this yeah. place in the Bible. Yeah. Because it says, that which hath wings shall tell the matter. Yeah. And if somebody somehow found out something mm -hmm. that was supposed to be kept a secret, uh -huh. yeah. somebody says, how did you know that? <laughs> and if they didn't want to tell how they found out, they just do this. They say, a little bird told me. Where do you think that came from? I believe it came from Proverbs. Yeah. That's right. I believe it came from the Bible. Yeah. Now I want to say that this imitation spirit is a directing spirit. That is, it is a spirit that leads. Every Christian has the spirit of God inside him. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he has none of his. The Bible says over in Romans chapter 8. Likewise, the devil works in his children directing them. Yeah. Jesus said, you're of your father the devil and the lust of your father he will do. Okay? And so there's a directing spirit. Ephesians 2.2 2 said that you walk according to the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Paul wrote to the Corinthians and in correcting them about the spirit world. He said in 1 Corinthians 12.2, You know that you were Gentiles carried away under these dumb idols even as ye were led. Unsaved people are led in their worship. They're just not led by the Holy Spirit. They're led by an imitation spirit. The Lord said to the woman at the well, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. The imitation spirit, my friend, will work in you to get you to rebel against the Scriptures and to resist God's Holy Spirit. Let me give you a couple of other thoughts and, and we'll uh, close her up. But this unclean spirit that is like the Spirit of God but is not the Spirit of God is a doctrinal spirit. What I mean by that? It teaches. It teaches doctrine. I don't know if you remember the warning in 1 Timothy chapter 4 that says that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of Devils, plural. Have you noticed that some of the major cults entice unstable souls yes. by getting them into Bible studies? Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The devil uses that appeal to the intellect. You remember him doing that with Eve? Yeah. You shall be as God, yes. knowing good and evil. And it was a tree desired to be desired to make one wise. And people get appealed to by the, by the cults and, and isms and have through the, through the years. One pops up after another. And it is a, an unclean spirit that gets into these movements and teaches heresy. One of the ways that they do it is they put out imitation Bibles. Yes. The Jehovah's Witnesses finally came out with their own Bible. Any of y'all seen the green Jehovah's Witness Bible? It used to be they was all green. It's 
called the New World New Translation. Translation yeah. And then, not only corrupt Bibles or imitation Bibles, but imitation brethren. Yeah. Paul talked about them, and we'll talk about them some later, but false apostles and counterfeit saints. Next, I want to say that the imitation spirit is a distressing spirit. Yeah. A distressing spirit. I'm not against doctors. Write that down, okay? I'm not against doctors. I personally do not recommend psychiatrists, especially if they're unsaved, to you about your mental health and your psychological health. I personally do not recommend them at all. You may have some Christian, some pastor, some other Christian who's able to give you some counsel from the Word of God. But I don't, recognize, I don't recommend these, this, this other crap. When you're talking about the psyche, you're talking about the soul. Amen. When you're talking about the spirit world, you're talking about what makes you up. Right. And I'm not trying to alienate any of you. If you're in my flock, I love you with all my heart. And I'd never say anything to try to hurt you. I'm trying to help you. Mm -hmm. Amen. But you'd spend a whole lot better money going getting Alexander Scorby on CD. And play him reading the King James 1611 Authorized Version Bible. Amen. When you go to bed at night, yes. then you will go spend $150 for a half an hour uh, talking to somebody that, that uh, it doesn't even know the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, they know the Lord. They may can give you some counsel, but that counsel better come from the Word of God. Yes. Distressing spirits. What I mean by that is, do you know that the Spirit of God... Do you know that one of the fruits of the Spirit is peace, yeah. yep. love, joy? Yes. The next one is peace. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit is peace. You know what the fruit of an unclean spirit is? Mm -mm. Lack of peace. Yeah. Unrest. That man of Gadara, who is filled with a legion of spirits, he did not rest. Mm -hmm. That's one of the signs. Get, get him his own book. He did not rest. He could not rest. He could not sleep. Night and day. He was in the mountains and in the tombs. Mountains are okay, but somebody likes to hang around the tombstones. I don't know what to think about you, especially at nighttime. I've gone over, I tell you a story about going through the tombs at night. <clears throat> mountains, tombs, day and night. And going through there, he was howling. Cutting himself with stones. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, oh no, she's a cutter. He's a cutter. I got some of my family. They're a cutter. Don't you know that person's having trouble with unclean mm -hmm. spirits? Yeah. Amen. That's right. Unclean spirits are distressing spirits. Yeah. They lead you to hurt yourself. Mm -hmm. God will lead you to take care of that temple that he's given you. Amen. God will lead you to preserve that temple that he's given you. Do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. In Isaiah chapter 48, verse 22. Could be that if people didn't have so many unclean spirits in them, that we wouldn't have so many adults who claim to still have attention deficit disorder. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just can't stay still, preacher. I'm not making fun of anybody who has something organically wrong yes. with your nerves right. and your muscles and your body. Yeah. But you save people. You've got to understand the Holy Spirit yeah. will give you peace. Amen. God's Word will give you peace. Amen. Unclean spirits will steal your peace. Amen. They will make you nervous. Mm -hmm. They will make you restless. Yep. The next time that you're having so much trouble, don't think that you that the only answer is the sleeping pill. Don't think that the only answer is the tranquilizer. Right. Don't think that the only answer is the mind-numbing drug. That's right. Like I say, it could be you spend some money and get the CDs of the King James Bible. That's right. Amen. Lie down and play. Amen. And listen to someone read. British accent. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. I shall not want. 
And it could be that that will give you some peace and help you. The Bible says God is not the altar of confusion, but of peace. In 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Let me give you one more thought. That is that the unclean spirit is a deceiving spirit. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. If Eve had been able to test the spirits and know what she was dealing with, she wouldn't have made the mistake that she made. These cults lie. They deceive. The unclean spirits. The, the devil said to that woman, you shall not surely die. He was a deceiver from the beginning. He lied to her from the beginning. Do you know most cults that have been formed by uh, unclean spirits deny some of these great doctrines I've been preaching about on Sunday mornings? Yep. Most of you have no familiarity with Christian science. But they basically deny the reality of matter, period. They deny the reality of sin. Sin to them is nothing more than you thinking wrong. Dear to beloved, that's a devil. The Bible got, has several definitions for sin. The Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus Christ is not eternal. Yes, that he was made by God the Father sometime in eternity past. They teach many other false doctrines as well. Unclean spirits lie. They lie about Jesus. They lie about judgment. You shall not surely die. Oh, yes, you will. I give you one verse to close with. When he wrote to the Corinthians about the spirit world, Paul wrote by inspiration of God, this is God's word, I say, 1 Corinthians 10, 20, but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. Listen to this. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. It bothers me that people who claim to be saved seem to have no discernment. And they just get so easily tossed. Yeah, yeah they're in yawn, back and forth. Yeah. Are you in fellowship with devils? You say, preacher, you don't understand. I'm a Bible-believing, independent, fundamental Baptist. I'm telling you what, you better be careful. You better be careful. First Peter, First Peter 5 a was not written to a lost man. Is written to a saved man, Amen. saying, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, yes. as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Thank you yes. so much. Yes. Would you stand with me for prayer? Yes. We'll have an